Hey! Welcome to the first ever piano tutorial. Today I'm going to show you a really cool exercise that you could do with your hands to get all 10 of these little fingers very strong, but also play some very, very beautiful music at the same time. Each one of my videos is going to be simultaneously teaching you techniques that can strengthen your hand and your brains, and immediately show you things that will sound beautiful and versatile and applicable in many musical settings. First thing I wanna show you is how to plop your hands down into the piano. So hold your hands out like this, like little cat paws, round. You want them to stay very relaxed and dangly and curved like this. And you're just gonna put them down on the piano. Now you want each finger to be on its own key, just like that. And we're just gonna do a very simple, simple starting exercise, just like this. Pinky and thumb on C, D, E, F, G. And we're just gonna try going up and down in eighth notes right now. Now, by the way, when you practice on your own, I highly recommend that you play with a metronome as much as possible. Not only is it incredibly helpful for your sense of feel and time and strength, but it gets you into this kind of meditative, in the zone style practicing where you could just go forever and ever and ever, hours and hours and hours without even realizing it. So highly recommend you play to a metronome or a drum beat or groove or record, anything like that. Super good all the time. So let's dive in. And we're just gonna do eighth notes, up and down. Nothing special, but it's just gonna get your hands warmed up. And you can do it as fast or slow as you want. Let's try a 16th note version. that my hands are always staying curved like the cat paw and I'm just kind of rolling the fingers side to side. So let's expand on this and try and make some music out of the same idea. What if instead of being in octaves, the hands were a third apart? So now take your right hand and move it up three keys. We're playing in C major right now and we're going to do the same exercise but in diatonic thirds. Let's try fifths now. What about six? So now your pinky and thumb are gonna be six notes away. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's nice too, pretty classical sounding, but everything's got a place. So now let's expand on this exercise and try doing different speeds with each hand. So even going back to the unison way, what if the right hand was doing eighth notes and the left hand was doing quarter notes? And now let's switch it. Let's do eighth notes with the left hand, quarter notes with the right hand. Let's do the same thing where the hands are a third apart and we're going to do eighth notes right hand, quarter notes left hand. Now switch the rhythmic values. try some hand shapes that aren't just five consecutive notes. So maybe a pentatonic scale on each hand. Let's try C major pentatonic in the right hand. So you've got a stretch here between the middle finger and the ring finger. And for the left hand, let's try the same scale. So major pentatonic in both hands, and we're gonna try the same principle. Now switch the rhythmic values. Let's try 
picking any random set of five notes in each hand, and let's just see what happens. This is kind of the fun of this. It started out as a very dry technical exercise, but you could very, very easily expand it into something creative. So the rule here is each hand picks five different notes, one per finger, and the hands never have to move, so you could relax on worrying about your hands being in the right place, and just focus on the fingers being pushed down, building up that strength and knowledge of each one of these 10 little guys here and just kind of kicking back and seeing what happens without even knowing or expecting what the musical result's gonna be. So for the left hand, I'm just gonna put my hand down and pick some notes. Without thinking about it too much. And the right hand, I'm gonna do the same thing. The notes are pretty similar, but different enough. And I'm gonna start off by just doing eighth notes in both hands, see what happens. They're a little crunchy, a little close together, so I'm going to pick some new notes in the right hand to give them a little more space. Nice. So I ended up just playing diatonic thirds in both hands, but with this nice melodic shape. And that's all good. It sounded great. Let's keep moving around the right hand and see what else we could stumble on. Seems a little perfect interval-y, not rich enough. Let's keep moving. That's nice. Let's try sixteenths in the right hand now. Now sixteenths in the left hand. Let's try sixteenths in both hands and maybe do contrary motion. So you start on the outside with the pinkies and go inwards together to the thumbs, like this. That's cool, I like that. So let's keep exploring this. Why don't we try spreading our hands a little bit out and playing a nice C major 9 chord, but all in one octave. And for the right hand, let's do a similar shape, kind of the inversion of it. And let's mess around with these two now. Maybe we're gonna do the 16th notes together in contrary motion. Yeah, I like that. So, when you stumble onto a shape or pattern that you like, Remember, you could just move it around the diatonic scale and you'll get the same awesome result in every mode. Now right now we're just in C major on the white keys, but you could take this to all the other keys and as we go through this video series, we're going to explore all 12 keys. I got you on that. C major is a great place to start because you could just turn your brain off and see what happens. So let's move all of this. Just move your hands. Try and keep all the same spacings and shapes the same and just move everything to the right. One key set. Boom. see what else we get. Let's try on F. I think this will be nice. What about on A? Now as you get more comfortable with this, you can move between these note sets very fluidly and create patterns and melodies and whole, whole loops. Kind of like this. Now if you want to try something even more advanced with the same 10 finger idea, let's try some stuff that's outside of the key. So a very, very simple but beautiful progression would be something like going from a C sharp minor 9 chord. So in the left hand we're going to go C sharp, that's the 1, the 2, minor 3, 5, and 7. All the notes of the C sharp minor 9 chord compressed into one octave. And with the left hand we're kind of going to do the same thing, we're going to go 3, 5, 7, 8, 9. 
And actually, these interval shapes mirror themselves and end up sounding very cool together. So now let's try going from this C sharp minor 9 chord. to the same shape but just sliding the appropriate fingers over to make it into a C major 9 chord. So we're going to take the C sharps and move them to Cs. We're going to take the E flats and move them to Ds. We're going to take the G sharps and move them to Gs. So now we're going to go... So we're gonna go from this shape to this shape. Ooh, it's so pretty. All right, let's try it slowly together. Here we go. Four measures on each chord. Here's the switch. final level of the same single simple exercise being expanded into infinite possibilities of music making would be a free play style where one hand is doing the steady ostinato so that your brain doesn't explode and the other hand let's do the right hand for now plays only those five notes so once again your brain is not going to explode but it plays just freely whatever notes or rhythms it wants i'm going to try that out and you can take this away and have as much fun with it as you want here we go. Left hand going. Great hand workout, by the way. Ooh, I'm sweating already. Here goes the right hand. exploit the common tones this way. For example, both the E and the B stay the same for both chords. So you could really milk those and get this smooth transition thing going like this. And ultimately, the final level of this exercise is where you could play freely in the piano with any chords and keys with these kind of five note arpeggiated ostinatos in whatever rhythmic values you need. Maybe kind of something like this. And by the way, absolutely feel free to get the pedal involved. I just demonstrated everything without pedal because it's harder on the hands. You actually got to stay in every note. But once you start to get it, feel free to indulge and put some syrup all over that piano, make it nice and drippy. So let's just try some stuff give you some ideas of how you can take this away.
like that shape, so I changed it. No big deal. So there you go. We started with a very, very simple dry technical exercise that's gonna get your hands stupid strong. And we took it all the way to a very free, fluid, fun, expressive way of playing piano. So you're welcome to do this as basic and slowly as you want, or as wildin' out and stunting as you want to and can. That's the first piano tutorial right there. Have fun with any of that. Give me your comments, let me know if I'm giving you the right amount of stuff, right amount of difficulty, any suggestions you got, I would love to hear. So much love to you for watching this. Thanks again, stay swiss. Mwah.